TV. And as you can tell by the title of today's video, I'm going to be talking about the dark truth of your birthstone. Yes, you sitting right there on your couch, on your bed, on the toilet. We have done eye color on this channel. We have done hair color. I think we've done something else. And now we're doing birthstones. By the way, from now all the way until Christmas, I'm going to be wearing a Christmas themed shirt in all of my videos. This is the first one. It has cute little bell sleeves on it. But yeah, I just wanted to get into the spirit before December. I love Christmas so much. Speaking of Christmas, we do still have our Christmas mystery boxes up on the website. They are going so quickly, so thank you so, so much. I will link that down below if you would like one. And also, we have these sparkly Christmas gnomes. I think these are probably my most favorite thing we've ever launched for Christmas, aside from the boxes, of course. They sit on any ledge and they light up. Da -da -da! This is what they look lit up. I love them so much. Currently, they're sitting above my fireplace. And they're just really cool decor for your room, for your house, whatever. So if you would like one of these light up Christmas snows, I have linked them down below. And my other announcement is that we have so many new schools who started Yana Group. So I'm going to give them all an announcement right now. We have Sunnyside Elementary, Jenkintown Middle High School, College of Adaptive Arts, Nakona Middle School, Bertha Barber Elementary School, Central Elementary School, Mount Ararat High School, and B. Gail Wilson School. You guys are all superheroes. Thank you so much for starting this amazing movement in your school, stopping isolation, stopping bullying, making new friends, spreading kindness. And as usual, if you guys would like to start a Yana group at your school, I have linked all the information down below. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's talk about the weird, creepy side of your birthstone. Birthstones are gems that are associated with the birth month. Each stone has unique meaning and significance, but not everyone knows the strange legends and history that surround them. So before we get started, please comment down below what your birthstone is, and if you have no idea what it is, you're about to find out. Originally, birthstones are related to the 12 gemstones appearing on the breastplate of the high priest of the Israelites, described in the book of Exodus. But the tradition of wearing only one stone for your month of birth did not begin until the 16th century. Now, people believe believe that birthstones can provide good luck, protection, health, even powers. So I am here to tell you all of the very strange facts. Now keep in mind, these were just things that people thought hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So I'm telling this to you for historical purposes, but I personally don't really believe that stones have any power or good or bad luck. To me, they are just beautiful works of art in nature, but I know that every single person has different thoughts about that and that's totally okay. All right, so let's start with the month of January, which is garnet. Now in modern day, it is said that garnet represents protection. But in history, this stone was thought to keep the wearer safe during travel. Now the word garnet is derived from a term that means seed because the gem resembles the color and shape of a pomegranate seed. Now there's a myth that suggests that the garnet originated with Persephone, the Greek goddess of sunshine. Persephone was captured by Hades, the god of the underworld. And before Hades released Persephone, he he really wanted to guarantee her return, so he gave her some pomegranate seeds. They also thought that when a garnet is stolen, it is said to bring terrible bad luck to the thief until it is returned, until it is returned to its rightful owner. Or they say that if your stone starts to lose its bright color, it means that danger and disaster is about to occur. So. Be careful. All right, let's move on to February, which is amethyst. And if you know me, you know that's my birth month. And I love this color so much, purple. Now in modern day, amethyst symbolizes wisdom because I'm just so smart, aren't I? But ancient Greeks thought that amethyst guarded against intoxication. And in fact, the word amethyst comes from amethystos, a Greek word meaning sober. And at one time, only royalty was allowed to wear them. I wasn't able to find out why this was, but I do know that the color purple has always represented royalty for some reason. All right, let's move on to March, which is aquamarine. And in modern day, it is said to represent serenity. Historically, it was thought to cure heart, liver, and stomach diseases. All one had to do was drink the water in which the gem had been soaking. It was also said to reverse the effects of someone that was poisoned. Early sailors also believed that aquamarine etched with the likeness of the sea god Neptune protected them against ocean dangers. So I guess those were all good things. Couldn't find anything bad about that one. Then we've got April, which is a diamond. And in modern day, it is said to symbolize strength. 
This stone was once thought to bring courage. In Sanskrit, the diamond is called Vajra, which also means lightning. And at one time, it was even thought that if you took a diamond into bed with you, it would cure your illness. Then we have May, which is emerald. And honestly, this is like my favorite stone to look at. It is so beautiful. I love green. So if this is your birth month, I'm kind of jealous of you. Now, in modern day, it is said to symbolize hope. Emerald was one of Cleopatra's favorite gems, and historically, it was associated with fertility rebirth, and love. Thousands of years ago, the ancient Egyptians mined the earth, suffering through extreme conditions to find the prized green emerald. Cleopatra was so taken with these stones that she claimed the mines for herself. In fact, she was known for wearing lots of huge emerald jewelry, and she even gave emeralds carved with her portrait to her important visitors. Ancient Romans even went as far as to dedicate this stone to Venus, who was the goddess of love and beauty. It has been claimed that whole Holding an emerald under one's tongue grants the ability to summon evil spirits. And apparently you should never gift someone an emerald on a Monday? Don't know why. Never explain that. Then we have June, and there's actually three different stones that go with June, so I guess uh, pick one. But there's Pearl, Alexandrite, and Moonstone. And we're going to talk about Pearl because that seems to be the most popular choice for this month. And in modern day, the Pearl is said to symbolize purity. The ancient Greeks believed that pearls were the hardened tears of joy from Aphrodite, the goddess of love, and in ancient Japan, pearls were believed to be the tears of mermaids. However, some believe that they should not be given to a bride on her wedding day, as they can bring sadness or tears to her marriage. Then we have July, which is a ruby, and in modern day it is said to symbolize vitality. Ruby was regarded by ancient Hindus as the king of gems. It was believed to protect its wearer from evil, and ancient Burmese soldiers went so far as to insert rubies under their skin to protect protect them from battle. Rubies were also historically associated with the planet Mars, with some people even believing that rubies are actually sparks struck from the planet that fell to Earth. And it says their fire will last until the world itself grows cold. Whatever that means, I guess they will last until the ends of Earth. Another belief is that a ruby can warn of impending danger. So when something bad is going to happen, apparently they will darken and they will lighten again once that danger has passed. Interesting. Then we have August, which is Peridot, and in modern day this is said to symbolize beauty. It is sometimes called the evening emerald for its light green color. It was once believed that the green Peridot crystals found in volcanic ashes were the tears of the volcano goddess Pili, and when set in gold, this gem was said to protect the wearer from nightmares. Then we have September, which is sapphire. I also love the color of this stone as well. In modern day, this is said to represent truth. It was once thought to guard against evil and poisoning, and it was believed that a venomous snake would die if placed in a vessel made of sapphire. Traditionally, it was also a favorite stone of priests and kings. It is also said that if a sapphire doesn't suit a person, it will bring them immense bad luck and bad fortune. So if this stone doesn't look good on you, you're in for bad luck. What the heck? Then we have October, which is opal, and some people also say the stone could be tourmaline. In modern day, this is said to represent confidence. Now this word actually comes from the Latin word opalis, meaning precious jewel. Necklaces and crowns with opals set in them were worn to repel evil and to protect eyesight. Opals were greatly valued by ancient monarchs for their protective powers, and it was also ingested in ground up powder to protect against nightmares. So when people were having bad dreams, they were like, here, eat some rocks. I swear it tastes good. Like forget nightmares. I would be up at night from a bellyache from that. In the late 19th century, Alfonso the 12th, King of Spain, experienced a spate of deaths in his family. This true story is so crazy to me. So it says his wife, grandmother, sister, and sister-in-law all died after receiving an opal ring. And what's so sad is that this opal ring was actually a gift from him. And each received this opal ring after the previous family member died. So basically everyone who got this died randomly. And then finally, he suffered the same fate after wearing the ring himself. Himself, so people began to believe that opals brought death which is terrible. Then we have November, which is topaz or citrine. And in modern day, it is said to represent joy. During the romantic period and turn of the century,
century Europe, citrine became more popular for the way it visually enhances gold jewelry. Citrine, like all forms of quartz, was believed to have magical powers and was worn as protection against evil and snake venom poisoning. I also wasn't able to find much more about this one or anything bad, so I guess that's a good thing too. And then lastly, we have December, which was turquoise. And this one is said to symbolize friendship. Since about 6000 BC, when it was first mined by the Egyptians, turquoise has been one of the most valuable opaque minerals in the jewelry business. Native Americans and Persians also valued it for its decorative and ornamental beauty. The Navajo believe that turquoise is a part of the sky that fell to earth. And turquoise rings in particular are thought to keep away evil spirits. I see a lot of common themes here with stones. Either they prevent nightmares, they protect you from evil spirits, they have healing properties, heal you from poison. A lot of this is very similar. So don't forget to comment down below which birthstone is yours. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to keep making videos talking about the dark side of your blank, let me know, give this video a thumbs up and I will definitely continue doing that. And like I said, it's not meant to scare you. These are all historical legends, which I personally don't really believe in. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget if you would like a new Christmas mystery box or one of the light up gnomes, I have linked them down below. But I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video.